Hello everybody, my name's Tia, I'm from Reptile Encounters and I've been passionate about nature and its conservation from before I can even remember. Today I am going to be talking about the biology and features of one of my most favourite animals in the whole entire world. It has six legs three body parts, antennae, and compound eyes. Now, if you guessed correct, you would have guessed insect. Today, we are gonna be meeting some spiny leaf stick insects. Usually, they are found in far north Queensland in rainforests and eucalyptus forests. But right now, I'm bringing them to you up close, right here. So, I'm gonna take you over to Cheryl. Cheryl is one of our spiny leaf stick insects and I am going to go and grab her partner. So I'll let you focus in on her for a moment. All right, so in here I also have Sherman. Cheryl and Sherman, my spiny leaf stick insects. Now, it's pretty easy to understand why they're called stick and leaf insects. Look at that gorgeous body. They are perfectly designed to look like sticks and leaves and that's what they spend most of their lifetime trying to look like. Pretty amazing. Animals that look like sticks and leaves are called phasmids and that word comes from the word phantom. Now, this is because they are so unbelievably great at camouflaging that when they are up amongst the leaves in that tr in those treetops up in Queensland, they're so good at camouflaging, they almost disappear like magic, like a phantom, which is really cool. Now, this helps them to hide from predators because animals like birds and lizards that want to feed on insects, hopefully, won't actually see them. But if they do, they do have quite a few little tiny defense mechanisms. No, they do not bite, they do not sting, but they may try and look ferocious. We said before, these guys are pros at mimicking. And what they might actually do is try and pretend to be a scorpion. Now we said before they have a head, a thorax and an abdomen, and that abdomen will actually coil up just like Cheryl is doing right here, and she is gonna try and look like a scorpion. You may see that she's got a whole lot of spines along her legs, and she may even pop those legs up in the air and actually kick at animals that may be trying to eat her. Now, there's even more. If they are trying to get rid of these predators, what they'll actually do is excrete this really oozy kind of liquid that to predators smells really awful. However, to humans, it actually smells like honey or maple syrup. And I actually love the smell of it, which is a bit strange, but really, really cool. Alrighty. Now you can see if we zoom in here, oh, Cheryl and Sherman who are climbing on top of each other, they look very different from what? Wow, I hope you guys got to have a little look at that. They look very different from each other and this is really interesting because they are both the same species and the same age. However, one is a female and one is a male. Now, in the stick insect world, the ones that are larger, stronger, covered in spines and live for longer is in fact the females. And the males, they don't live as long, probably between six to eight months, where the females, they can almost live up to two years. Um, they are a lot smaller, lighter, more slender. You can see that their abdomen doesn't curl up as much as the females. They'll get to about 11 centimeters. The females about 20 centimeters. And Something really incredible that the males have that the females do not is those amazing big wings and the boys can fly. So you just saw that incredible wing flush that opened up there just then from Sherman, our male stick insect. You can see that our female has two tiny little wings. They're very underdeveloped and they will never develop more than that. So they're unusable and she is in fact too heavy to fly. Now because she doesn't move around as much, she's actually covered in more spines than the boys. And because the males actually do fly, can you have a look at his antennae? They are so much longer than 
Cheryl's, which is super amazing. And this is because when he's flying, he uses those antennae to feel in front of him. So when he is flying, as he just demonstrated, before he crash lands, he can feel those leaves with those antennae so that he doesn't in fact crash into them and hurt himself. Another thing that a lot of flying insects actually have are actually extra eyes. So um, we can see that Sherman, just like Cheryl, they have those two little buggy eyes. They're called compound eyes with lots and lots of lenses in them. And on the head of Sherman, there are actually three simple eyes. So that's called ocelli. And they've only got one lens and it helps them to see light and dark when they're actually flying around and to navigate those skies. Now, the females will actually stay mostly in the one tree. Are you doing a little dance, lovely? For their whole lives. And the males are the ones that are more agile. They move around and they will spend their time looking for females and actually fly around to all those different trees to try and breed with the females. Now, this is really amazing if they do sexually produce, but if they don't and there are no males around, it doesn't matter because our females can actually, and this is so wild, they can actually reproduce without a male present. It's called parthenogenesis and the babies that she will have when she reproduces with no male at all, they will be exact copies of her. They'll be clones of our female here. So they'll all be the same color and they will all be girls as well. Now, something really, really amazing is actually in her little abdomen here. She actually has an egg. Do you want to show it? Let's see if we can get a photo of that there. There we go. She is about to drop a little egg and the females have that really thick body. So they, oh, you can stay there if you like. <laughs> they have that really big body because that's where they keep all their eggs and they can actually lay thousands of eggs in their lifetime. Now, when they lay those eggs, they'll usually be up in the trees and what they do, flick the eggs on the forest floor. Now, this doesn't sound like a very nice thing for a mum to do, but it is for an important reason. She is hoping those eggs make it to the ground and they get stolen by bull ants. Now, that sounds like another crazy thing for a mum to do, but there is a method to the madness. Let's take a little look at some seeds over here. All right, well, I said seeds, but they are actually some stick insect eggs. And we said that these guys are really good at mimicking. They try to look like leaves by swaying in the breeze. They try to look like scorpions and their eggs actually look like seeds. And they emit a smell called a pheromone that actually smells like seeds as well. So that is actually to attract those bull ants. So what happens, these bull ants, and it's, it's a specific species of bull ant too, the red-headed black ant, they will sniff out those seeds and they will actually take them down into their bull ant nest. And these eggs are covered in carbohydrates and sugars and there's a little knob on the top called the capitulum and it's full of that sweet good stuff and the bull ants actually eat around the egg and it doesn't harm the developing stick insect inside. So they've eaten that outside bit, they realise they're not seeds and they discard them in the bull ant nest. Now these guys, they need to incubate at temperatures of around 25 degrees and inside that ant nest is the perfect temperature and humidity to make the most amazing nursery for our baby stick insect eggs. So what happens here when they sexually reproduce, those eggs will maybe hatch around four months. But if the mum has produced the eggs by herself via parthenogenesis, it could take up to nine months for those eggs to hatch. So that's a lot of time in the bull ant nest. However, if those eggs don't make it down into the bull ant nest or they don't have the, that perfect humidity or temperature to actually incubate, they could stay dormant, so frozen um, in their development for actually up to three years, which is absolutely amazing. And it's a great adaptation to surviving and making sure you have the best chance at life. All right, it gets even better than this. We're going down the mimic train again. When the babies hatch, they look identical to red-headed black ants. Wow, let's have a little look at our freshly hatched little young over here. 
you can see them sticking to the glass. They're still great climbers, even when they're juveniles. They can see, especially on this one here, they have little red he heads and black bodies. Obviously, ants are also insects. So they have those six legs and a similar body shape. And what is actually happening here? When they look like the ants that they're sharing a nest with, it means they can escape out of the ant nest safely without being detected by those ants. Ants are pretty ferocious and great at teamwork. And if they see an intruder, um, what they're going to do is actually try and attack and eat them. But if they think it's one of them, they will let them pass, run up out of that ant nest and up into a tree. Now at this time of their life cycle, they're actually more agile than they'll ever be. They're super quick at this phase. They'll run up that tree, start eating lots of eucalyptus. And these guys, they spend their whole lives munching on different types of eucalyptus. They can take the leaves of other native plants too, but they're not really fussy. They just prefer gum leaves, which is pretty awesome. They'll be eating all those gum leaves and eventually they will start to change color, lose that red head and start looking like tiny little miniatures of the adults. Now, for a stick insect to grow, they are in fact in vertebrates. Now, what that actually means is their bones are very different from ours. So you see, we are vertebrate animals, which means we have a spine. The bones that connect our spine are also called vertebrae. That's where that name comes from. These guys are called invertebrates because their bones are in fact on the outside of their bodies. So they kind of have like a hard shell to keep all the, the organs inside nice and safe, all the squishy stuff, right? Now, however, their bones don't grow and stretch like ours do. If they get too big for their outside skeleton, or the word for that is exoskeleton, they actually have to peel it off, all right, which is pretty amazing. Now, where that word exoskeleton comes from, if you think of an exit sign, exit means outside. So exit outside skeleton, exoskeleton. That's where that word kind of comes from there, right? All right, so they get too big for their bones on the outside, they need to peel it off. And what they'll do, they'll actually hang upside down. And this could be for up to 30 minutes and they'll slowly be emerging from that exoskeleton, which is pretty incredible. Now, once they are out of that skeleton, um, their bodies will be really, really soft and slowly harden in the air and expand to their new enlarged size. Now, male stick insects, they will shed about five times and the females about six times until they reach their adulthood. And when they are adults, that's, that's when the males will unfurl those amazing wings and the females will start laying eggs as well. Now, this is a phenomenally interesting animal. I think they are absolutely amazing. Oh, we have a little escaped baby up here. These guys are so good at camouflaging, sometimes we don't even find them, along with mum over there. I hope you have enjoyed learning a little bit about the biology and awesome features of our incredible spiny leaf stick insects. My name's Tia, I'm from Reptile Encounters, and I hope you had as much fun as I did.